Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here with our video on the chain rule. Often we will need to compute a derivative that has a function inside of another function. In math we also call this a composite function. And when we take the derivative of something like this, we will need to use the chain rule. The chain rule says that if I take the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x, the function g is inside of the function f. So that derivative rule is going to be f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Okay, so the idea here, if you look at this first part, notice we've taken the derivative of f, but we've left the function g inside of it. What we'll then need to do after that is multiply by the derivative of what's inside that gives us the g prime part of our formula. Let's look at some examples here. So we have the derivative with respect to x of the quantity 4x minus 1 all cubed. Okay, so we have a couple of ideas what's going on here. We have something being cubed, that's one idea, and we have the function 4x minus 1. So this 4x minus 1 is inside of the idea of cubing something. So what we'll do is go ahead and work on our outside idea, which is this idea of cube. And then we'll go ahead and look at this being the inside, this 4x minus 1, two separate things we'll deal with. Let's work on the outside first. So if this were just x cubed, think about we would use the power rule, right? The 3 would come out front, multiply the x, the power would go down by 1. So we do a similar thing here, at least with the cube part. So the 3 comes out front. This is just power rule. Now we leave the inside stuff alone. We leave our g of x alone. So 3 times 4x minus 1, power going down by 1 gives us squared. Now the chain rule says we then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of this inside, derivative of 4x is 4. So we just get 4 for the derivative of the inside. We should go ahead and multiply these and say 3 times 4, so we'll actually say 12 times the quantity 4x minus 1, all squared. Let's go ahead and look at this other one here. We have the derivative with respect to x of the square root of 3x squared minus 2x. So we have this idea of 3x squared minus 2x inside of this other idea that is square root of something. So we want to perhaps rewrite this and think of this as a power like we did over here we had a cube. So think about the square root of something is actually that something to the one-half power. So this would be the same as the derivative of 3x squared minus 2x all to the one-half. So a similar thing here, we have this expression in here, but we also have this outer idea of taking the one-half power of something. So let's go ahead and do our one-half power. The power comes out, multiplies in front, so we get one-half in the front, times, leave the inside alone, so times 3x squared minus 2x. And the power goes down by one, right, to finish our power rule. So one half minus one would be negative one half. So that's just the power part. Now we go inside. Chain rule says times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of three x squared, that's also a power rule. Two comes out front, multiplies the three, so we get six x. Derivative of negative two x would be minus two. Now we have a 1 half here, so we'll keep a 2 in the bottom there. Let's go ahead and write our 6x minus 2. And then we have a 2 in the denominator from the 1 half. And all of this to the negative 1 half, the negative says in the denominator, and the 1 half power says square root. So we actually have the square root of all this in the denominator. Now if you look at this, you'll notice that 2 and everything on top can be reduced. Right, so if I reduce everything on top by 2, we'll say 3x minus 1 all over this square root of 3x squared minus 2x. All right, looking at some more examples here, we have some trig functions. So we have the derivative with respect to x of sine of x cubed versus the derivative with respect to x of sine cube of x. So in this one, notice that the cube is inside of the sine function. So the outer idea is the sine function. The inner idea is we're cubing x. Okay, so if I go outside in, I'll do the sine part first, then I'll worry about the cube. So let's go ahead and do this one. So if I take the derivative of sine of something, don't worry about the inside, the derivative of sine of something is cosine of that something. So cosine, leave the inside stuff alone, x cubed, 
times the derivative of the inside. So now going inside, the derivative of x cubed would be a power rule. 3 comes out front. Power goes down by 1. We get x squared. Now only this x cubed is actually inside of the cosine function. This is just multiplying on the outside here. So we would want to go ahead and rewrite this so it looks a bit clearer. We would say 3x squared times cosine of x cubed. Let's look at this other one here. This is a little bit different. Let me rewrite this in a different form just to make sure that you see what we're doing. Sine cube x in trig, really what we're saying there is that's sine of x all of that cubed, right? That's just the way that we write it. We write the power actually on the trig function, even though this isn't sine cubed. Sine isn't an object that you can just cube, right? So this is actually saying all of sine x is cubed here. So our outer idea now is the cube. Our inner idea is the sine x. So we'll do the outer idea first. So that would be a power rule. The 3 comes out front. We leave the inside stuff alone. So that would be sine of x. And then the power goes down by 1, so we would say squared. Derivative of the inside, now that we're done with the outside idea, so the derivative of sine x is cosine x. And one way that we might write this, this sine of x all squared instead, we might go ahead and say, like we have in the original problem, let's write that as 3 sine squared x times cosine x. We may also have problems where we have multiple uses of the chain rule, many layers of things. So here I have the derivative with respect to t of cosine squared of square root of t. So think about all the layers here we have, right? So think about this is the derivative with respect to t. So I have square root of t inside of a cosine function. But then this square also says take all of this and then square it. Right, so we have multiple layers. We have root t inside of cosine, and all of that is also inside of the square. So we'll need to work outside in. So we will do the power first, then we'll worry about the cosine part second, and then being all the way inside at the last, as far inside as we can go, would be the square root of t part, okay? And we'll make a note that this is really t to the one half when we get down to it. All right, so let's do that. So let's do our power part first. So the power piece, 2 would come out front. We would leave the inside stuff alone. I'm going to go ahead and keep my brackets here. Maybe we'll clean this up at the end. So leaving all the stuff inside of the square alone. The power goes down by 1, so this would all be to the 1. I'm going to go ahead and leave that off just to keep this clean as we go. So that's the power rule part. Now we go inside. Next thing would be cosine of root t. So don't change anything about the root t. We're just worrying about the cosine part right now. Derivative of cosine something should be negative sine of something according to our rule. So that would be negative sine of square root t. Don't touch the inside stuff, right? Not yet. Now we go all the way inside to the square root t part. Remember that is t to the one half. So if I'm doing the derivative of this last little inside bit, that's going to be power comes out one half. Power goes down by one, so we get t to the negative one half. And now we can start to clean this up a bit, right? You'll notice that 2 times a half, those will reduce to 1, so we don't have to worry about those. Notice that this has a negative exponent, so this will actually be in the denominator, and then this stuff here will actually be in the numerator together. So we have a negative, and we have cosine of root t times sine of root t. And then you'll notice what else we have. We have t, it's in the denominator, and the 1 half power also tells us that it's a square root, so we also have the square root of t down below as well. You can rationalize this if you need to, but we'll go ahead and stop here on this one. We can have our chain rule appearing inside of a product or a quotient rule. So here I have a product, I have x to the 4, and I have square root of 2x minus 1. So when we do the product rule, remember that the derivative with respect to x of some function f times some function g is going to be f prime g plus f g prime, taking the derivative of one at a time and then adding them together, right? So if this is my f and this is my g, what you'll notice here is that g is a chain rule when we do the g prime part. Let's go ahead and do this. So we would have 
f prime first, derivative of x to the 4 is a power rule, 4 comes out, power goes down by 1, so we get 4x cubed, that's our f prime part. Now g, we'll just copy that down, so that would be square root of 2x minus 1. So that part is done, now we'll add regular old f, so just x to the 4. And now we're doing the g prime part, so the derivative of this, right? So I want to think of g maybe as 2x minus 1 all to the 1 half power, and then I can do this root as a power rule. So let's do our g prime part. So that's going to be 1 half coming out front. We'll leave the 2x minus 1 alone. Remember, we don't touch it yet with our chain rule. And then power goes down by 1 to negative 1 half. The derivative of the inside now for the chain rule gives us a derivative of 2. Derivative of 2x is just 2. Derivative of negative 1 is 0. And so that's our g prime part of the product rule. So you can see we did our product rule, and then when we got to the derivative of g, we needed to use the chain rule. So here I think our 1 half and our 2 at least reduce to 1, right? So up here we get 4x cubed times the square root of 2x minus 1. Now here I have an x to the 4, and then I have this thing down below and in a square root because the negative 1 half power. So we'll say plus x to the 4 over the square root of 2x minus 1. So what we may also want to do is get a common denominator. So you think of this over 1, you could multiply the top and the bottom by this square root 2x minus 1, and that would give us a common denominator, right? Now if I multiply the top by this square root, that's just going to get rid of the root there. So we'll have 4x cubed times 2x minus 1 all over that root. And then we would also have plus that x to the 4 over the root as well. And now if we do some distributing here, you'll notice we get 4x cubed times 2x would give us 8x to the 4. Distributing to the minus 1, we'd get minus 4x cubed. I would also have plus x to the 4 from my second fraction. All of that is going to be over that square root. And now if we combine some like terms here on the top, 8x to the 4 plus another x to the 4, we'd really have 9x to the 4 minus 4x cubed all over this square root of 2x minus 1. Let's look at one where we have a quotient rule and a chain rule inside of the quotient rule. So our quotient rule, remember, is if we have the derivative with respect to x, of some function f divided by some other function g, then that is going to be low d high minus high d low all over the square of what lies below, right? So you'll notice if this is my f here and this is my g, you'll notice then when I do my derivative of g, I will have to use the chain rule. So let's go ahead and do this here. So the derivative using the quotient rule, low function would be square root 2x minus 1 times the derivative of the high function, f prime, so that would be 4x cubed, minus the high function, so x to the 4 as it is, times the derivative of the low function. So that is, remember this was power rule, we did 1 half we left the 2x minus 1 alone. Power goes down by 1, so we got negative 1 half here. And then remember, we got times 2, the derivative of the inside from our chain rule, right? You'll notice this f and g are the same ones that we used in the product rule, right, in the last one. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on that since we've already really computed that g prime part for our product rule. Okay, all of it over the square of the bottom, right? If I square this square root, then that's just going to leave us 2x minus 1 without our root, right? So again, our 1 half and our 2 multiplying will reduce to 1. All right, let's go ahead and clean this up a bit. So we have actually 4x cubed times the square root of 2x minus 1 over here. And then this is really a denominator here, right? So we have minus x to the 4 over 
2x minus 1, it's in a square root in the bottom. So square root 2x minus 1. And then all of that is going to be over this 2x minus 1 that we have in the bottom. Now what we should do here, I think again, is think of this over 1, get a common denominator at least on the top, and then combine and do some simplifying with this. So I'm going to multiply again the top and the bottom of this fraction here by the root 2x minus 1 to get a common denominator with over here. Now when I multiply the top, that's going to make the root go away. So we'll just get 4x cubed times 2x minus 1 over our root. And then we'll have minus x to the 4 over that root. We at least have a common denominator on top. And now I have 2x minus 1 on the bottom. Let me give myself some more room here. So let's go ahead and rewrite all of that together. So, And I'm going to distribute as well. So 4x cubed times 2x, I get 8x to the 4. That should look familiar, right? Times negative 1, we get minus 4x cubed. I get minus x to the 4 here. All of that is over this root. And then all of that is still over 2x minus 1. Okay, so now think about what happens here. If I, instead of dividing by 2x minus 1, let's think of multiplying by the reciprocal, maybe 1 over 2x minus 1. So don't think about this anymore. So now really what we have on the top times 1, that's easy, right? Let's do some simplifying. 8x to the 4 minus x to the 4 is actually 7x to the 4 minus 4x cubed. So that's our top there. And then on the bottom, what we have here, I have a root of 2x minus 1 times a full normal 2x minus 1 here. So I have one copy here. And remember, this is like the 1 half power here. So if I have this to the 1, and this is really the 1 half power, if I'm multiplying these together, we can add the exponents. So the 1 power plus the half power gives us the 1 and a half power, also known as the 3 halves power. So this is our one and a half power. One copy came from this. Half of a copy came from the root. So we really get 2x minus 1 all to the 3 halves there on the bottom. All right, hopefully this helps you get started on your chain rule. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.